I have a map of Manhattan as it was uh, 400 years ago, 500 years ago, and I have a map of Manhattan as it is right now. If I would have this map of 400 years ago, will I be able to navigate in the same, uh, in Manhattan, the same exact place? Of course not. Why? Because it, it, it has changed dramatically, right? Well, imagine that this is your education and this is the new world. This is what's happening. We need to completely change the map. We need, we need to say, okay, fine, things didn't work out. I'm going to start doing it in a complete uh, different way. for me is, who works harder? Do you work hard for your money or is your money worker harder for you? Just think, of it. who's working harder? Are you working harder for your money or is your money working harder for you? Most of the time, your money. Make, right now, you are the slave of money, right? But what I'm gonna actually, with, with the things that I've been teaching you all today, is I want you to start becoming the master of money. Money is a great, it's a great slave. It's a great slave, but it's not a very good master. Okay, so these are the seven obstacles to financial freedom. First of all, fear. Fear of what? Of losing money. Point number two, doubt and self-doubt. Point number two, laziness. Laziness is a very, very big obstacle to financial freedom. Point number four, bad habits. Point number five, arrogance. Point number six, poor advice. And point number seven, not choosing your friends carefully. If you get associated with turkeys, what do you think is going to happen? You're going, to, you're going to start blah, 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 like turkeys. So the important thing and the most important thing that you need to do, whatever you have learned on this seminar, is get in the water. Make sure that you apply every single thing that I've been telling you. It's very, very important because if not, you're not going to be able to accomplish the goals that you would like uh, to accomplish. So be start from the, be smart from the start. Don't get, caught, don't get caught naked. Make sure that you're already building your nest egg for whatever is going to be happening in the future. Now, let's get our board, uh, our board wax. What's the difference between capital gains and cash flow? What's the difference? Who can tell me what's the difference between cap capital gains and cash flow? Cash flow keeps you going. Cash flow keeps you going. Very nice. Cash flow keeps you going. Uh, uh, capital gains. Keeps, the investment. keeps on getting your investment and keeps getting your, your business bigger and your and your uh, um, your uh, net worth bigger. Very good. Do you suffer? This is a very important question. Do you suffer from the single bank from the single bank account syndrome? How many of you have one single bank account and that's it? Okay. If you're suffering from that syndrome, guess what? Change it now. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you need to have. Actually, I would say have three bank accounts. Have one bank account that you're going to be using for your internet business. Have one bank account where you're going to put, be putting the leftovers from your cash flow, which is going to be generated over here. And you're going to have another bank account, which is going to be only for using your expenses. Don't only work with one bank account. Working with bank, one bank account is very bad for many, for many, uh, for many reasons. For, for many reasons, you, you need to have several buckets in where you can start moving your money around. That's a critical thing. Now, I'm going to go very, very fastly in how you can use the internet in order for you to also start creating capital gains. I have already showed you how to use the internet in how to create cash flow. Now I'm going to teach you how you can create capital gains using the internet. Would that be interesting? Yes. Very good. Okay, so first of all, we have to understand how the stock market works. First of all, there's some urban myths that I have to clear out about uh, this, uh, making money on the, stock, on the stock market. First of all, investing on stocks is dangerous and difficult. That's not true. That's a myth. That's an urban myth. You need to invest for the long term and diversify. It's not true. That's also a myth. When stocks are down, all, stack, all stocks are down. Is that true? Absolutely not. Some of them are, some of them aren't. You have to understand how that works. You need a portfolio to make money on the stock market. Is that true? No. Of course it's not. Investing, investing is the same as trading. No. Is that the same? No. Of course not. You need a broker to invest in stocks. No. Of course not. You cannot buy insurance when you buy stocks. Is that true? No. 
Of course you can buy insurance when you're buying stocks. And I'm going to show you how you can actually buy insurance for your stocks. Only professionals can make money on stocks. Is that true? No. Of course not. The thing is we have never been educated on how this, uh, how this works. So let's go very quickly. What are shares? Shares are a part of a company. When you buy a share, you become a part owner. In other words, a shareholder in the company. Shares, shares are also known as equities or securities. A company whose shares may be bought by the public and traded on the open market is called a quoted public limited company, PLC. Now, what's an IPO? What's the meaning of IPO? Initial, Initial public offering. For example, Google was an IPO a couple of years ago. They started trading for $86. Right now, they're over $400. How many of you, if they would have told you, these are the guys that you're going to be investing in, you would have taken your money out and put your money in? <laughs> you know who these guys are? Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft Corporation, 1978. <laughs> OK? So, basically, <laughs> yeah. okay. the stock market, basically, for you to understand, I'm going to go very, very fastly. The stock market may be uh, thought in terms of separate functions. First of all, a primary market function where companies can raise long-term funds for their operations by using shares and other securities to investors. Second, the secondary market function where investors can buy and sell those shares at current prices as determined by other investors in the market. The marketplace basically is a marketplace for buyers and sellers. After a company has listed and issued shares to investors, the shares then become sold and other, to other investors in the stock market. The price of the share is determined by the forces of supply and demand. Very good. There's two types of markets. You have the bull market and then you have the bear market. How many of you have ever heard that? What is the difference between one and the other? The bull market, when the bull market is hitting, the stocks are going where? Uh, Up. When the bear market is hitting, where are the stocks going? Down. Down. Okay, so whenever people tell you, uh, tell you about the, the, the bull market and the bear market, you already know what that is. Uh, perfect. Now, very easy. When there's, when, this is very easy for you to remember. When there's a bear market, that simply means that stocks are on sale. So it's a good time to uh, buy. buy. Oh my God, the bear market's coming, the bear market's coming. Sophisticated investors, people that understand how it works, they go like, yes, go for it, baby, I want it. Right? People that, are, people that don't understand, go, oh my God, the stocks are going down, the stocks are going down. So when, uh, when, there's a, when there's a bear market, basically the stocks go on sale. What is the success strategy? Very simple, buy low, sell high. But why do people mess up? They buy high and they sell low. low. <laughs> Do you need to be a nuclear scientist to figure that one out? <laughs> but people keep on doing that. That's how the other guys are making the money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is, a this is a disaster strategy. Buy high, sell low. This is what you should not do. In other words, you have to buy low and sell uh -huh. high. Excellent. So uh, your job. Your job is, not, is, is to trade well, not to trade often. For example, I, do, I don't do that much, but I do, let's say, four or five trades per month. That's it. That's all I do. I don't do that much. Why? Because I am waiting for the stocks to go on sale. I'm just not trying to trade. I'm basically waiting for the stocks to go on sale in order for me to uh, purchase. For example, if you would be seeing this on the, on the window of a, of a shop, would you buy? I don't think so, but strange enough, for some strange reason beyond my understanding, people buy when they see these type of things in the stock market. It absolutely blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind. You don't need to be a nuclear scientist to figure out that that's not a success strategy. 